Hi everybody, welcome back. Um, today I'm looking at drawing again and um, I'm, I'm looking at um, different techniques uh, for those drawers out there. Of course there's the um, dreaded cross hatching. So um, what I wanted to show you was that, um, so this is a cross hatched ball. I'll show you how I did it in, uh, later on in the video. But um, this was all the leftover paper that from what I cut off from here, obviously it went right across like that and that um because that was the length of the uh the the width of the paper and um i didn't want that for my board but the idea is i'm going to fill this up um with all bits and bobs wiping my brush on it so it's a bit like i did a course with um um i did a course with uh louise fletcher and everything and um of, uh, we had like a, a play board so you could wipe your brushes on it and everything so that's the idea of this it's an experimentation very much an experiment experimentation uh piece of work it's something i can wipe a brush on it's something i can wipe my pen on i can uh, you know just literally get my pen if they're a bit you know going they get a bit clagged up on the end sometimes and i can literally just wipe it on and then if you just keep doing that and making marks and things it's going to accumulate accumulate lots of nice marks random marks that you you wouldn't even think about and you can try try things and you can put it on the edge of your work so when you splatter in it, it won't go onto you onto you over to that side where i don't want it to go so um, it is important to have spare paper, but it's also nice to be able to make it into something. And then when it's done, um, I think I explained this in the video uh, later on, I can just make it into whatever I want. Um, so I think it is important to do that. But um, just watch the video because as I'm drawing and things, I'm explaining because some of this brickwork and things... Where I live in Derbyshire, in England, the uh, walls and things of buildings are very much uh, like the walls and things that you see in Derbyshire and everything, where the there's big gaps in between them, you know. And um, I, I mean, and, uh, this is taken from an old farmhouse. I've done this farmhouse many times in my sketchbooks um, in different ways. But I drove past there the other day and took more photos and it was absolutely, it's falling down really bad now, which I love because it's like all the slates on the roofs and everywhere, they're all wrong sides and falling and everything. So I'll be able to put that all in on the roof eventually. But this is all the brick in here. And then I'm, uh, I was going to have it down here as well, but I'm going to put something else here now, I've decided. But, yeah, so it will take me a long while, but um, if I can teach you something along the way, I will. Well, I say teach, I mean, you can have a go at it. Um, so um, there's different methods. And for cross-hatching, it's not as easy as it looks. But the thing about cross-hatching is, it is a traditional way of drawing. And uh, the new ways of drawing and everything are amazing, don't get me wrong. But if you really want to draw traditionally and you want that kind of look, then that's nice. Um, but I want all different kinds of mark making in my work. I don't want it to be, you know, at the end of the day, although this will be like intuitive and things, it won't be, um, how can I explain it? it will still be quite abstract. So putting splatters on and going up like that, it fits in with my kind of work. It makes it more whimsical, if you like. I, I like it to be more whimsical. I don't like my work to be so serious and boring that people look at it and think, oh yeah, that's a good that's a good drawing of such and such and such and such. I want them to look at it and think, oh, look at that. Look, there's a mouse climbing up that tree. Or oh, there's a squirrel in there. I didn't see that squirrel. Well, there isn't actually, but I may put one in, you know, and people might not realise that that's a water tower at the back of there. That actually is there in a photograph, but um, it's um, on the other side. So I've just popped that in and then um, I've got, I've found it. Say if you've got your iPhone here, say if this is an iPhone, if you go onto your photograph 
and you press and hold it with your finger, it will bring, and you can slide it and bring it down a piece of it to where you, uh, uh, to save as a new photograph. So therefore, so I've got like, this, I've picked bits out that I like. And it's a pity I can't take a photograph of this and pop it in. And I think you probably would be able to do that in Photoshop, but I don't want to spend all the money and buy Photoshop each month and things like that. So I, I want to do it the proper way. Um, but yeah, um, so have a look at the video. I hope you enjoy it and uh, have a go. All right, I'll talk to you all soon. Bye. So this is a is a big uh, drawing, as you know. So um, I've, I've gone, I've moved it round. It's on wheels, so that's all, all okay. So now I'm in a position where I can cross hatch over that now, and it's going to be at the perfect angle that I want. And still using that same direction, so it could come out how I want it. A lot of people struggle with cross hatching, but if you can master it, and I, I'm nowhere near a master, don't get don't get me wrong, but um if you can master it, it it can it gives it the traditional effect that we that we all like to, well not everybody but like people like to see. I certainly like to see it. And this this drawing it's such a big draw and it's probably going to take me two to three years in my, you know it, um i don't care um this drawing is going to be framed and uh, put on my wall unless it sells but um i would like it on my wall in my uh, art studio um because it's a really big one so i'm going to pay and have this one framed so um but i'm not putting on myself under any pressure to not make mistakes. If I make a mistake, I I make a mistake. It's no big deal. It's not easy when you're doing it with pen and ink. So if you are unsure and you're using pen and ink like I am, well, this is fine liner pens. If you are unsure, then please, please just do it in pencil first. Just the just a small bit. Don't go. I don't. I'm not a person who plans the whole. Um, painting out because it's very much an intuitive painting and just I just take bits from little bits of pictures that I've seen and I move them around um I'll show you some pictures at the end of what I've been doing uh, of the photographs that I've been doing and how um it's nice to be able to move them around but um I just picked out the bits that I like and I want this to be, I don't want this wall to stand out too much that's behind um, the this tree because um, I want it to be a picture where you, you look at it but you've got to really look to see what's in the picture. You know, I, it's an overall effect that I'm going for, uh, for contrast and things like that, uh, not individual bits of contrast. So, so like this, this area here might be darker than the next area then there might be another dark patch so from a distance you'll be able to see that this is uh you know an overall composition wise and um contrast wise a good picture um but then when you look close i want you to be able to look at all the details that i've done and so so this tree, I want this tree to be a little bit darker now because I do want this tree to stand out in front of this wall and the wall behind it actually is pretty dark. So um, it's so that's not easy to do. So I'm just going over um, cross hatching again. You can do it in all different kinds of directions. At the moment, again, I'm going from right to left, right to left, right to left. Really filling in all the little bits. And then... At, I'm going to now go from bottom to top, bottom to top, nice big strides going up like this, bottom to top, bottom to top, and uh, that brings it out again. But what it will do is it will leave a line here if you leave it as a remaining of bottom to top. So um, it's good doing bottom to top to refilling in 
any light areas but I really need to go then again in the opposite direction to bring that more down I don't want to just paint it black because if I just paint it if I just draw it black it's it, there's no detail gone into it and I, I don't want that I want it to be you to be able to see that there is some time and effort gone into it you know so it is important to be able to go uh, to, to use your cross hatching to its best so I'm just going to change this around now if I can okay yeah so now I'm going to go from right to left now and that will feel, make it even darker trying to keep the lines quite close together now and um, they'll be less prominent the cross hatching will because it will be more filled in so it actually looks like it's been shaded in and that's the effect that you want you're wanting to get an almost solid line so if i just show you on the blank piece this was the concertina paper that i cut out um that was spare off the end of my paper and I've done it like this so I can try out different things so if I've got a square here and here remember how I like to do the thumbnails if you're cross hatching yeah if you if you going from say if I want to put a ball on a table for instance here like this if I want to shade this now let me do this in a bit thicker pen uh, now because um, it's a bigger area that I want to show you so I'm going to be going uh, as I said to you before I like to go from right to left so right to left nice big strides take your time if you go over it slightly it doesn't matter yeah you've got to practice being able to this is a large area for me to do this is what the exercises that you need to practice so that when you go in larger in your work, you can actually, you can actually still do your cross hatching over large areas. But the look that you're wanting to get is that you've filled in all those white gaps so it looks like it's shaded. So if I'm wanting, for instance, to put um, more shadow on this side here, I'll now turn it round and I'll cross hatch across. I'll go here. See, I can go quicker because I'm comfortable going in that direction. Yeah. And then if I want to make it even darker, if I want to make it even darker now, I can go up and down or I can go straight across so I'm quite comfortable going right to left here as well so again nice and comfortable and you can see it's almost like a yin yang badge that it's kind of going more comfortable on one side it's getting darker so the lines are still there the gaps are still there but they're not so it's giving it that cross that cross feeling so if i was to fill that in there now just with something random i don't know and then put a shadow here same thing cross hatch it across turn it round I want it still to be darker, so I'm going to go down now. And if I want to go even darker, I can now put my solid line in of where the bottom of the circle is. It looks very abstract because the reason why it looks more abstract is because the um, I've gone over the circle as well. I've not stopped where the line is. So I may, I may have started there. I don't want to fill it in too much. Just trying to show you what um, I mean. 
I'm no expert at cross hatching, but I'm just trying to show you. And the more you practice on these little thumbnails, the better it will be to put into your work. Because if that's a, quite a large object, and that's quite a small object, you'll find that a lot easier. You can see now down the side of this tree, it's looking darker, and that's what I was after. So I can see see the difference between the the dark against the light area yeah and then more dark here against light so it's dark against light dark against light and so it's really important if i want to now make this even darker i can just go over just the center part even closer together inside those and go round again So now I've made it even darker. And go around that bottom bit. There. Can you see? So now we've got a ball sitting on the table. And that's all just from cross hatching. Still looks like a ball sitting on the table. You know, it's still there. There's a ball sitting on the table there. Yeah? And then, you know, it so these are good ways to be practicing your work, you know, and, and save them. And it, like I say, this is just paper that's been cut off from um, the, you know, I, I had too much paper um, that I cut out. So it's just been cut off from the roll and um, this was over. So I, like I say, I saved it into a concertina. So I can just practice anything I want. So a bit ago, I was doing some splatters and um, what I did, because I obviously my line of work is down here, it's in pencil. I don't ever want to go past the, uh, that line. In fact, the line that I've got is this line. This line is the line that's going to be for framing and obviously I'll rub that out. But I want to leave that white line and I've done it all wavy all the way around. So I'll only go to this line across here. So if I want to put some splatters on, I will cover it up with my with my sheet up to where I want the splatters to go and then with my pen here I can do this and a couple of splatters will come on look they've gone up the page but they've not gone up there yeah and that's it that's that's what I wanted to do and any leftover splatters are on here I can wipe my pen on here now and uh, just pop that one side to dry and leave this to dry now and it's it's really really coming on i'll show you some pictures but yeah so that's how to do some bricks how to do some cross hatching and uh, these this lower part of this wall here that's the next um area that i'm going to do is uh these are going to be like they are quite neat bricks so i'm not sure whether i want to do those as neat bricks or continue you know with this with this pattern or because along here especially down this area here there's lots of ivy growing and because the ivy is growing um you know and it comes right down um then i want i want to, that to be like really prominent down here so i should be working on my mark making to be able to create that ivory effect rather than just squiggles like what i use in the trees do you understand so this is where your spare paper and concertina book it comes in handy so so far then you see i've got some um scratches and some smudges and a ball on here just as part of a demonstration that I've done for you. But eventually I should be filling that up and then I'll be able to do the other side as well. And then at the end, if I want, I can put some watercolor painting on there or whatever I want. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, yeah, so I hope you've learned something from the video and uh, I'll talk to you all soon. Bye. So when drawing bricks and things, I usually draw them all together like this. I don't draw them like one brick and then another brick i usually draw them like joined together and then i create my own lines and these squigglers that i put all over the top i then react to them just as you would do in abstract painting and drawing so like where that goes up there now i've, I've made that part darker and same here look it's made i can make that part darker because it i know it will look right because i can see from a distance if i look back 
I can see that the squiggles are there and I can react to them. It's a matter of uh, rounding these bricks off just like you do when you're doing neuro art because I'm wanting to make these more organic shaped even though they started off as like not organic shaped you know they started off as an ordinary um a shape that's like just like really square like that's really square that i've just filled in there but obviously i want it to be like more organic shaped because this build this particular farmhouse building that i'm drawing now it was very dilapidated and it de i can't even say that word and um it was just dropping to bits so you know to add in some of these marks now it's just perfectly ideal um, because the, the bricks are not going where they should be going anyway. So it makes it fun to do. See like here, look, there's a squiggle there. So if I drop the black mark down to that squiggle, it's given me an, a, an effect that's made it look like it's um, going in a bit where the cement is and things like that, or there's holes and things. There's no use just like drawing bricks even if they are very much a, a, a general brick that's not um, broken down like this. There's no use drawing them if they're not going to be working for you because it will be too plain and it will make the, the drawing plain and boring. So I want to fill in these little marks, rounding my bricks, rounding my corners, like I say, like you do with neuro art, rounding the edges, and um and uh, like i say reacting to some of these marks not all of them but some of them so that it gives it a bit of interest to look at and you can see then that you know someone's not just drawn the same brick over and over repetitive although bricks are repetitively built and structured we know for instance like you'll have one two three bricks in a row and then in between them will be like another one there then another one um but if you do it like this it makes it more like a bit like crazy paving where you do the paving and the cement you know you've broken the slab into the crazy paving and into the cement and things and that's what makes it good and all the time as well while i've got these squiggles on here i'm looking at areas that i can make stand out as well you can only do that by keep looking back and going forward again and pausing and having a look so this drain pipe down here um that, that's i'm just going down now with my pen um it's there but it's quite hard to make out so if i do the bricks coming round here like this making them round coming from it you can see it better because the contrast of the round area against the straight area you know the um the loud conversation against the quiet conversation that's good um and that's what so it's making now that that pipe now stands out because i've made it dark against light in dark against light and that that's what we're after so just i'm just continuing now with these little dark areas and then you can see how i've been coming to get these lovely round crazy shapes and that's what you want you want you want your art to you want somebody to be able to look at that and think gosh look at them e there's even um detail on the on the on the bricks rather than just around the bricks and the shape of the bricks so these are actual like crazy paving like these are more like you know, if you would see a wall, if you was walking, say we're walking around and all the walls and the fields and things in Derbyshire, then yeah, that's what you will see. So now what I've done there is I went underneath that with a little tiny bit of pencil and I smudged it. Then I did me crazy little squiggles over the top, just like I'm doing now with a pen, just dead light. And then I've rounded them off. And if you stick to this way, it, it, your work will come out the same and that's what we're wanting to be able to recognize that it's your work from one piece of art to another uh, don't round off everyone because some some of them will be quite sharp and so you won't you know it won't, might be quite a sharp brick 
uh, or or uh, rock or whatever that's put in so that's what you want but now I want in the shading to come from this side so I'm just going to change my pan and um, to a, a little bit finer I've told my paper down for this and then on the left hand side of these I'm just going to come in like this and this is all that you do some people will probably want to leave that and um, be a bit more cautious of their lines they might want to do them a lot more straighter and things like that um, I don't and I am going to cross at you afterwards um, I'm going to come across the shading across the bottom of the brick when it's a bigger brick because obviously it would be darker underneath than it would be on top so I hope this video has helped you all and uh, I look forward to talking to you all again soon um, bye for now.